Good afternoon. My name is Meg Matuska, and I serve NPM as the Vice Chair of the Board of Directors. And I'm honored today to present the Pastoral Musician of the Year Award to Richard Cherie. The active participation of the assembly is foremost in Richard's mind. He calls forth the gifts of musicians and non-musicians alike, drawing out the harmony that connects us as a human family. He serves humbly under the radar, lifting others up while he works diligently without fanfare. In the tradition of Reverend Clarence Rivers, Archbishop James Patterson Lyke, Sister Thea Bowman, Sister Pat Haley, and Leon Roberts. He has led the church here in New Orleans and indeed the United States into a rich experience of the multitude of gifts offered by African American Catholics. In addition to being an accomplished composer, arranger, and producer, he has been a champion of many black Catholic composers and artists and an inspiration to countless students, choir members and musicians of all backgrounds, and in gratitude for his decades of leadership, we are honored to present the 2021 Pastoral Musician of the Year Award to Richard Cherie. Once again, welcome to this beautiful edifice. You know, when I walk into the cathedral, I'm reminded of the, the history of this place, and, and I, I'm reminded of my own journey in music ministry, where it began in fourth grade as a member of the Epiphany Choristers, an all-boy choir. And at that time, of course, the church was transitioning from the Latin Mass to the uh, vernacular, and of course, it was singing in that choir that I learned that the, the, re, the proper response to Dominus Vobiscum was Ecum Spiritutuo, and not Here Come Spirits Two in a Row. <laughs> I come to you today as a product of a very important event in the American Catholic Church, the emergence of a new paradigm of Catholic worship that is authentically black and truly Catholic. The Bishop's Committee on the Liturgy describes it as, quote, the joy and hope to be found when the African American religious spirit touches the heart of Catholic liturgy. Why this new genre of liturgical literature at the dawn of the 21st century? Karl Rahner and other scholars comment that liturgical theologians must tap the rich reservoir of spirituality and theology that is erupting within the liturgical practice of its diverse cultural communities. Normative statements about the church's worship cannot carry the full burden of articulating the church's liturgical encounter with the living God. Nor can the comprehensive work of liturgical theology be shaped by the perspectives of a single culture. <laughs> 